will officially uh, begin our uh, observing of silence before we begin. Uh, we'll be opening our service this morning with the Great Litany, um, and so that'll be found in, in your leaflet as well. Um, and you can follow along with the choir for the sung responses. So let us keep silence together as we prepare for worship. Fire 
of the faithful. Have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us. In all our time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear our Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord, that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord, that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace, to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred, and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. 
that it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, the Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, the Lord. That it may please thee to make war cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, the Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings to do the work which thou givest us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. We that it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. We beseech thee, Lord, the Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. That it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee, Lord, the Lord. That it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee, Lord, the Lord. That it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, Lord. That it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, That it may please thee to grant that, in the fellowship of blessed Peter, the blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Oh.
Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many laying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and you cause, will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, 
I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Holy Gospel Gospel of our Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ Christ according according to John. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus Lazarus of Bethany, Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples disciples said to him, Rabbi, the the Jews Jews were just just now trying trying to stone you, and are are you going going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. Those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were still with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. 
When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I decided to hang out here today uh, for two reasons. One is that I don't, uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you've had to prepare uh, giving a talk, a speech, a presentation, and you've had about four different ideas of how to do it. That's what I've been living in with this text. That's the joy of having these very long gospel texts over the last few weeks is that there's so much there. I had about four. I've decided to choose one, and I've tried to make it the shorter one. I wanted to talk to you about lament today. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Talk about telling it like it is. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. I find that to be one of the most deeply Christian things that we can say, and I want to tell you why. Lament is a deep part of our tradition. As people who draw from the scriptures, particularly from the Psalms and our worship, about 40% of the Psalms could be categorized as Psalms of lament, which are Psalms where the psalmist basically yells at God for a while. We get to yell at God for a while. I find that 
incredible and good because sometimes we need to tell God how it is. If you would have been here, if you would have done something, if you would have acted how I think you should act, this wouldn't have happened. God, where are you? God, what is going on? God, are you sleeping on the job? This is in our scripture. And we have the opportunity and the privilege to talk back to God in lament. It's interesting, too, though, especially as Western Christians, that even though 40% of our psalms could be classified in that vein of lament, of crying out to God, that our Protestant hymnals in the West tell a different story. That actually only about 12% of the hymns in most popular Protestant hymnals would be classified as hymns or songs of lament. More often, they skew toward the triumphal side. They skew toward everything's going to be okay. God is going to make a way. And of course, we've experienced that in our own lives, haven't we? When we go through something difficult, when we're walking through a challenge, when we share that with a trusted friend, or perhaps we've even heard that from a pastor or priest, we get what I call bumper sticker doctrine back, right? God is good all the time. Well, God is in control. Everything happens for a reason. That's my least favorite. What's the reason? That's my next question. And do you know it? And how do you know it? And who told you? What we see in our story here with Lazarus what we hear in our psalm as well are these opportunities to cry out to God in our grief, to feel our feelings. Um, I'm learning about how to do this as a parent. Uh, we, uh, we have a feelings chart in our house. It's a laminated uh, grid that has pictures of kids having different feelings, sad, happy, excited, hungry, <laughs> frustrated. And we've been trying to use that with our son to help him feel his feelings. I've actually considered using that with adults too. <laughs> because we're not always conditioned to really feel our feelings, are we? We're, especially in settings like this, especially in times where we want to talk spiritually we usually sort of try to say, well, yeah, I was a little frustrated, but blah, 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 blah. Let me, let me push that down deep and not talk about it anymore. Rather than letting it out, being honest with it, feeling it. That is what the practice of lament offers us. It's a good thing. Because, of course, it finds its way out eventually, doesn't it? usually directed at someone else that we love and end up harming because we've been holding on to it. Or it finds its way out in our social media life. We can just type it out furiously on our, on our phones or on our computers and post it out to the world so that somebody can see that we're frustrated. This is the longest grocery line I've ever been in, right? I mean, these sort of things that just kind of come out. What Lament offers us the opportunity to do is to take those feelings and direct them to God and speak them to God. So I wanted just to let you know, there's, there's kind of a, usually a four-part structure for lament. My hope is that this might help you in your own feelings, when you're having whatever feelings you're having about the world around you, to be able to direct them to God. The first is simply the invocation, the address. Lament, lament is, is lament, lament when it is directed, directed to God. To God. Right? Not, not out, out to, to the, the void, void, not, not screaming, screaming into, into the, the void, void but, but speaking to God. to God. We hear both, both Martha, Martha and Mary do this. Lord, Lord, if you would have been here. We hear Jesus do this on the cross, and we'll have this read as we get into Holy Week. Uh, quoting Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
So we so direct those feelings toward, toward God. God. That's a really so important, important part of lament. Of Otherwise, Otherwise, it's, it's just, just screaming. screaming. It's, it's just, just yelling. yelling. It's, it's just, just complaining. complaining. We funnel it and direct it to God. That's the first part. The second part is simply the complaint. Invocation or, or address and then complaint. What's wrong? Again, I'm thinking about how this works out as a parent, right? What's going on? Are you hurt? Are you frustrated? Are you having big feelings? What are they? Name them. If you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. I'm disappointed. I'm discouraged. I'm disillusioned. Whatever that might be. The cancer has returned. The relationship is over. The damage seems to be irreparable. There can be power in actually naming it. Not just the feelings, but what are, where are the feelings coming from? And then, of course, there's the petition. So addressing to God... The complaint, the complaint, but also, but also the, petition, the petition, which is, this is what I want you to do about it. Fix it. it. Make, Make it, it go, go away. away. Comfort, Comfort me. Help, Help me understand. understand. Bring them back, back to life. life. And, and there's, there's a fourth, fourth part, part to lament. lament. And I, 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 I hesitate here, here on purpose, purpose because... because we tend, we tend to move, to move too, too quickly, quickly to, it. to it. And it, and it is, is the turn, turn in trust. trust. It's, usually it's usually marked, marked by, by a word, word in, especially in the Psalms, Psalms. But, but or yet. Yet, yet I, trust I trust in your unfailing in love, so my heart will rejoice. Martha, Martha says, says it, but I, I know that he that will he be raised, raised up on the last day. day. And I trust, trust you. you. Lent, Lent is a is time, a time for, for us to really live in lament, lament, to get in, get in touch, touch with, with the things that we're feeling, feeling. and oftentimes Often through, through certain Lenten practices, practices they, help they help to highlight those feelings. feelings. And it's a it's time, time to not, to not move, move too quickly toward trust, toward trust. which I know can, can sound like a strange, strange thing to say. But the, but trust, the trust is so much, so much deeper, deeper and so much more meaningful and more real when it is actually a response to what we actually feel, what we actually think, what we actually want God to do. When we wrestle with those things, that is when we can truly turn in trust. And it's a process. And it takes time. And it often doesn't fix things either. So, so for, for us, us in, in lament, lament, there are times that we want explanations, there are times that we want answers, and I wish I could tell you that this practice of lament gets us those. I don't think it does. Most of the time. But it does get us God. It helps us to be reminded that God is present in the midst of those things. And that, and that specifically, specifically as Christians, Christians we, see we see God revealed in Christ, Christ as, a as a God who is, who is also, also grieved by the things that grieve us. Who weeps at the graveside, even when he knows resurrection is coming. He grieves. A God who is moved when we are moved. A God who feels alongside of us as we feel. This is good news for us. Yes, it's not a reason. It's not an explanation. But it is presence. And it's presence with a God who also knows what it is to suffer and to lose and to mourn. So my prayer for us as we continue our move toward Holy Week, and it is very close, that we would not move too quickly to resurrection and to hope and to trust. That is coming and that is assured and that is good. But for it to have its work in us, for it to do its work in us, may we do the work of lament. 
May we make our complaints known to God. May we also let him know how God can join us in our grief and suffering so that our joy, our hope, our trust may be that much more full. God doesn't give us explanations, but Jesus weeps with us. Jesus gives, him, gives us himself. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Excuse me, Derek.
quickly uh, share a few uh, announcements with you. It's good to be with you this morning. Um, I hope the feeling's mutual. Uh, uh, some big news for us as uh, Episcopalians in the Diocese of Maryland. Uh, we have a newly elected bishop coadjutor, is the, the term. So the person who will become the new bishop of the Diocese of Maryland. Uh, her name is Carrie Schofield Robbett. Um, she is, will be the first diocesan female bishop that we've had here in the, in the Diocese of Maryland. Um, and uh, it was a fun, interesting experience yesterday. Um, to my first time helping to elect a, a bishop. So uh, many thanks to Kofo, who served as our delegate. Um, Catherine was there also as our alternate. Um, and, uh, and yeah, how was it, Kofo? What was your, I'm putting you on the spot, but what do you, what do you think? It was a good learning experience. Yes. <laughs> That it was. Uh, it only took us three tries to figure it out, three ballots, uh, with four candidates. Uh, and so, um, so anyway, I uh, was really, really grateful to be there. Uh, there'll be more uh, to announce about how that's uh, all transitioning, but um, a really, really exciting day uh, for the church and uh, someone who I think is a, a gifted leader for us here. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, Holy Week is nigh. Uh, Easter is coming. And so I wanted to share some things specifically about that. First is that uh, typically we have people who like to give gifts in honor or in memory of uh, their loved ones uh, to help to sponsor our Easter flowers for the altar. So if you would like to do that, um, you can do it in two ways. Uh, there is a, a, an announcement in the bulletin where you can email our parish administrator directly with that information. Um, and, and give, I, be, I believe it, the running rate has been a gift of $65, is that right? 55. 55? Right. Yeah, you know, or we can average it and make it 60. Uh, <laughs> or make it 70 for inflation, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> uh, we will be grateful to receive a gift of around $60 um, uh, to, uh, to help to uh, sponsor those flowers. Make sure you do give us uh, the information, whether it's in honor or in memory of someone in their full names, so we can include them uh, in the bulletin for that for Easter Sunday, or for the vigil for Easter Sunday. Um, so uh, you can do that, or if you prefer to, to write it down and give a check, you can do that. We just need to make sure that your handwriting is legible. Um, so if it's not, if yours isn't, find someone whose is, and they will write it for you, uh, and you can put that in the offering plate. Um, but we, uh, we do need those uh, by, uh, by the beginning of next week, so after, after next Sunday, so we can have time um, to put it in the bulletin. So we appreciate that. Um, this coming week will be our, this coming Friday will be our, our final Friday in um, doing Stations of the Cross uh, and Benediction of the Sacrament. So uh, we'll invite you to that uh, at 7 o'clock uh, to be followed by a soup dinner and, um, and uh, adult education discussion. Um, and then, starting next Sunday, next Sunday is Palm Sunday, uh, and so we will be uh, gathering and doing a brief procession for that, um, and uh, if you thought today's gospel was long, <laughs> just wait till next Sunday. Um, and we will, uh, we, that will begin our, our journey toward, uh, toward Easter, and so we will be having something every evening here at St. Peter's during Holy Week, and I wanted to just let you know what that is going to entail. On Monday and Tuesday evening of Holy Week, we will be having Holy Eucharist. It will be a chapel Eucharist here in St. Luke's Chapel, um, and so uh, it will be a lot more of an intimate gathering, very simple Eucharist service, um, uh, where we invite you to, to gather for that time at 7 o'clock. Um, on Wednesday, we will be having Tenebrae again this year, as we did last year, a service that uh, is rooted in psalms and lessons uh, for, uh, as were often practiced by monastic communities during uh, Holy Week. And so uh, we'll be, that'll be a, a service of reciting and chanting psalms and hearing lessons as we prepare. Um, uh, it was a really beautiful service last year, uh, I thought, so I invite you to that as well. Uh, Monday, Thursday, uh, we will also have Eucharist at 7 o'clock uh, to be followed by stripping of the altar and uh, the repose of the sacrament. So we will be uh, placing the reserved sacrament here in St. Luke's Chapel to, uh, to be there uh, for our overnight keeping watch vigil, to which you're invited to come at any point Thursday night into early Friday morning. 
um, to uh, spend some time to keep watch with Jesus as he asked his disciples to do uh, on the night before he was crucified. Um, Good Friday. We will have a noonday prayer service for Good Friday. It will not be the Eucharist. It will be uh, a, an office prayer service, contemplative prayer service, where you also can do self-guided stations of the cross at that time. Uh, and so I invite you to, to that if you're able to do that. Uh, and then at 7 p.m. will be our principal Good Friday service, uh, where we will um, have that service. Uh, communion from Reserve Sacrament is a part of that. Um, Saturday morning, we will be doing morning prayer for Holy Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, and that will be gathering a lot of people who have a lot of work to do that day. Uh, and so we will gather for prayer first. And then uh, there will be a lot of uh, our flower guild will be at work helping to, to decorate for, for the vigil. Uh, and then this year is a little bit different than last year. Last year we did have two different vigils, an early vigil uh, that was more family oriented and an evening one. This year we're just going to have one at 9 o'clock. Uh, and so uh, we're, that we're just trying that this year to see how it goes. Uh, but we'll have our great vigil at 9 o'clock. Um, that will be a service uh, as it was last year, also with incense, uh, pulling out all the stops, as they say. Um, and then um, Easter, Easter Day will be a normal 9.45 a.m. service. And then nap to follow. <laughs> uh, at least for me. <laughs> so... Um, if you do have any questions or can't remember that, uh, we did uh, print a schedule for you in the bulletin, but I just wanted to make sure I went through that um, with you all so that you know what is coming. Um, do we have any other announcements that would be good for the sake of the community at this time before we move toward communion? No? Okay. All right. Well, uh, what follows is Holy Communion. Uh, we'll continue to uh, receive, as has been our practice, specific instructions are in the bulletin for you. Uh, but we will be having um, uh, uh, sacrament in both kinds, receiving wine from the common cup, um, drinking from the cup. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, that's okay. You can just cross your arms uh, when, uh, when the chalice comes by. All right. Siblings, Siblings in Christ, Christ, in view of God's, God's mercy, mercy, I invite I you now to offer your bodies, bodies as a living sacrifice. sacrifice holy and acceptable to God. This is your act of spiritual worship.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Grant you hope in the future and grant you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 May God, God bless, bless you, you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you hope, future, and grant you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, Bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that, rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.